So after you get your model assembled and on the base, you want to take some uh, some CA glue, mm -hmm. put it on there, start moving it around. You can use the tip of the uh, glue dispenser or you can use like a piece of wire if you want to keep the tip of the dispenser a little cleaner. Usually I get it kind of close to the feet, but not on it. It's okay if it gets on it because it just looks like dirt got picked up on the feet. A little extra there. And then grab one of our wires and just push it around. All right, so once your glue is out, I'm gonna take some sand. Now this sand has already been sifted, so you get a finer amount, but I like to use the sifter to apply it because it goes on smoother. If you dip the whole model into the sand, what'll happen is you'll push the glue up. The force of the sand will make like little ridges. It can push it away from the side. It can push it over the edge, so you get a lot of glue coming off the edge. This is just a clean way to apply it. You set that to the side and let it dry. After your basing dries, what I like to do is take uh, my airbrush and just make sure I blow any loose sand because sand can get up in these little uh, textured bits here and like up in the face. You don't want to prime those and get them stuck. See this guy's got some stuck right there in his gun. So I'll take my airbrush, blow it out of there so it gets rid of it. Just to make sure the model's clean. On to priming. Got our trusty Duplicolor Sandable Auto Primer. Got our model, and again, quick motions over the figure. And that's it, don't need to get it super solid, just on there, and then we're gonna hit it with some of the black airbrush primer for our uh, primary layers. Now we're gonna use our uh, surface primer, the Vallejo Black, as our base layer. Fairly high pressure. Just get it on there, all right? Not looking for anything super detailed. Just making sure that our all our cracks and crevices are filled in so we got a nice rich dark surface to work from, to work up from. Make sure we tilt it up, get under all the cloaks, on the chest in there. Now we don't need to prime the backpack's black because we're just going to go over the regular primer with silver. Uh, I'm going to finish these guys up. After you get your black primer on, we're going to take steel through the airbrush on the backpacks. Now for the backpacks, I haven't even glued them. I've just taken a little bit of poster tack, stuck it in the little divot in the back, and shoved a rod, and that's enough to hold your backpack for painting. So you take this, and again, a little bit lower pressure than what we were doing with the priming. And that Vallejo steel covers like butter. I'll just do the whole backpack. All right, that's it, and I'll get the other three done. Alright, for this next step, I'm going to do about 50 50 airbrush thinner and the Phil Martin's Bombay White. Um, this is an India ink, you can use acrylic ink. We're coating over it, so works fine. All right, when I'm painting these guys, got a fairly low pressure. Gonna build up slowly, that's why I thinned it down. I go around the bottoms of the coat until you get to pretty stark white with a fade to the top. So it's not just a zenithal, we're controlling where this stuff goes. You see our white fade here. And I'm going to fade it in just a little bit more like that. Make sure the tops of my folds are nice and stark white. Now I want to aim for the top of the head. Fade it down the back of the hood. So I'm using the outside of the cone of that airbrush hitting not straight on but up like this because the side of that cone is going to come down tickle the top of that head and we get that nice fade next thing we're going to do is make sure we hit those sleeves so there's 
little sleeves that they have kind of poking out fabric here on the arms. We're going to make sure we get our red on those. White, but that's where the red's going to go. All right, so those are for the Rangers. And these are the Vanguard. So same thing, except for these guys on the helmet. I'll hit from this side because this little crest here in the middle is going to keep our paint from going on smoothly so I don't go straight in. I get the, the front here, front here. Again, this is more to keep interest toward the front of the model. Brighter colors on the front, darker on the back. And whatever order you want to do, you can do sleeves next. Because they got these sleeves hanging down here. And then bottom of the coat. Coat cloak. Combination word. Coat. That gives us this nice dark shadow in the back. more spot highlights on those sleeves there I'll go ahead and get the other two guys done up. All right, after you get your white done on all your guys this is where the magic happens the contrast blood angels red through the airbrush and then just coat over your white put it on slow don't force it to cover you don't want to spider anything out and just go over the whole model Anywhere that was white will get really bright, vibrant red. And anywhere that was black will get to a dark, shaded red. Hit from all angles just to make sure you're getting inside the cloak and under the sleeves. Just to get that tint of red on there. And there we go. Base color red. Next step will be to put a yellow ink on. So this is the yellow ink I was talking about. Use the Vallejo Game Ink. This is a quick coat. Just hitting from all angles. Light. All this does is warm up our red just a little bit and it makes sure that any of the pinker areas warm up. And I'll show you the difference side by side here in a second. So you can see side by side the this one's just a little bit warmer than this guy. If I can get the light going. You got a little bit more orange tones going on in him. Just a little bit more standard red there. So that's the difference it makes. After you get all your airbrush layers done on these guys, go ahead and hit them with a clear coat. Could be any of the clear coats that you, that you use. The only reason I do that is because when we airbrush so many layers on here, the surface gets very porous. And when we go in and hand paint our silver, it's going to want to leach into all the red areas. Like on these tubes, it'll try and work its way down the cloak. So we want to try and avoid that. Um, that matte varnish helps gives us a little bit more of a normalized surface for the paint to go on. While your matte var varnish is drying on those guys, you can go ahead and break out the shade. We're going to put none oil on all the backpacks. Now, I've got a number six synthetic brush for that since we're doing a kind of a big overall wash. All I like to do is load up the brush really good, get in there, and you can see how much wash I got on there. Just slather it on. And it might take two or three dips of the brush to get enough on there. And work it into all the cracks. You want to work fast with this because you don't want it to dry while you're working or you'll get streaks. You can work really thick and you can always use a drier brush. Go back and hit the paper towel with this brush. And siphon off any excess pooling that you get. So I'm going to wipe my brush off and you see here where it's kind of filling in where that hose is. Just going to take my brush, 
pull it out of there. There it goes, it popped. Alright, so I got my wash on my first backpack. So this is a pretty quick step. Alright, once you got all your washes on, next step is to add our golds. For that, we're going to use the Vallejo liquid gold. Now you don't want to wash up with water with this. You want to use your uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean your brushes. Um, you don't really want to thin this stuff either. Just um, shake it until you don't see any solid part. See that kind of solid part on the bottom? We'll just shake it till that's gone. And then with the Admec, the the parts you want to be painting are kind of all over the place. It's your choice. You want to use a crappy brush. Um, I know a lot of the weapons here are have gold trim and things. So this stuff goes on really nice. And we're going to have wood in this area. So I'm not too worried about getting my gold over it. I want to do this step so I can do this step and then use a sepia wash. Because once I use the... Um, the sepia wash, I can do a dry brush of silver over the whole model, and that way we can brighten up our silvers and our golds at the same time, because the, the silver dry brush brightens up our gold just as well as it does our, uh, it does our silver, because right now it's a little bit dingy from the washes. But finish up this step and we'll move on to the next part. Alright, from here we're moving on to the Reichland flush shade on our gold slash brass areas. Um, you can see with these guys, it's kind of just pick some spots, a lot of filigree and stuff on the guns, the, the cogs and that for their backpacks. Um, like I always do the cogs and the little sensors and things that are hanging off of there. If you don't see a lot of bits, you know, just pick some random circles, things like that. With the sepia, we'll give it a good shake. Get our liner back out. And then just like we did the black wash, we're going to want to be a little bit heavier with it. Let it pool. We don't want to cover up our silver. Right? We're just trying to touch the object and let the wash run right to the edges of the little squares and that. Again, it's okay if a little bit gets out because they're Admac. They're not super clean. This little mohawk here. But what this does is it it'll knock our shadows into a less neutral state, so not black anymore. And it'll make that red just or the the brass slash gold just a little richer. See how that really brings that gold out? And then our, our dry brush is gonna bring it out even more. Uh, but this is a little more of a controlled wash. A lot less Happenstance. See, I'm going to have to go back and hit that little area with gold. But no worries. Just have to wait for that wash to dry there. I think my light went out because the camera temperature. Alright, we're going to finish this step up and then move on to the next. Alright, you're going to want to make sure that your your wash is dry. Now we're going to take some more of our silver here. Got a little tiny kind of specialized dry brush so I can get in where I want to without getting anything on the red because we want to avoid that. Make sure we're really dry. And then go in and start highlighting. You see how it adds that little highlight there? Just on the edge. Okay. Just a little bit. And then we're going to hit areas like the helmet, high points on the helmet to brighten it up some. You see this is a little bit dingier than this side now. We're going to bring that up. Little tiny brush strokes. 
a little bit goes a long way on this step. It's another fairly quick step. Don't have to rush it. I'll make sure we're getting highlights in where we want them. I'm just kind of knocking out a little bit where places got overwashed. And the area needs to be smooth or we had like some some spot pool up. But we're gonna do the rest of these. I need to add some wash here. As you're going through, you might see steps. These models have a lot going on. So it's okay to miss something and then go back and you know hit it with some wash and then come back and you can you can dry brush it later when you're doing another step. So after you get all your dry brush in and <clears throat> highlight it up, we're going to use uh, a black. You want a good clothing coating black. We're going to paint all the pants, hoses, gloves, all the sort of objects. And this is a long step. And you're going to want a decent brush where you can get in where you want to. So pants, big thing. We're going to start cleaning up these little messy areas where we got overages down in here. You can see some of the metals come over from the dry brush. Gonna get rid of that. And then any hoses that are hanging down. These I went ahead and painted metal, but I'm gonna go back and hit hit with the black. Like here on the side. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna hit these with the gray dry brush later. Again, breaking up shapes. <clears throat> Adding a little more interest to the figure, and we're going to dry brush these with a, a cool gray so it'll stand out next to the red. Oh, this is sort of a, a tedious process. And then gloves. So some of the hands are mechanical, and then some of these guys they'll have what look like human hands that are in gloves. They'll be kind of wavy and cloth-like, so we're going to cover those up. See where the fingers have been dry brushed. We're just going to go and cover that up. That's one of the reasons we do these steps in, these or in this order. It's because we know we're going to go, as we progress, we're going to go and we can, we can fix those little overages. And for the sake of time, we get more done. Alright, for the next step, once you get the black done, we're going to take a little bit of blue. This is a sample color. I just grabbed it off the shelf. But it's kind of a, an, a muted ice blue. Mix it down with your black. Uh, pretty, pretty low, almost black. You don't need a whole lot of highlight for these. For the ribbed cables here, move the light. We're going to go just kind of along, skate the brush along the top so you pick up the top edges. It's okay if it gets in there a little bit. There we go. That's better. Stop a wiggling. Same here. Just kind of a light using the side of the brush. And then, like with the fingers, anywhere that's black, I want to go ahead and start adding just a little bit of that cold, dark blue as a highlight. So this is going to contrast really well with your red, and it's going to take the neutral bit out of this, this black and give it sort of that cold blue look. And we're going to do all our hoses like that. So next we'll move on to purity seals. For the purity seals, I like to use hot orange when we have a red main tone character because that red will kind of get lost. The hot orange is a little bit brighter. And then we can mute it a bit with a um, Agrax Earth Shade when we're done with that. So, hot orange is one of those colors that just doesn't like to coat very well. So I just put it on heavy. It's kind of an amorphous shape anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, here. Still might need a couple coats. You can, see, you can still see that base color kind of showing through. Sure, we get the edges all the way around to knock out any of that silver or gold that we got on it before. I 
And then once that dries, we'll put on another coat, make sure it's opaque, and then we'll wash them. Now for the bottom part of the purity seal, I'm going to use this uh, Terran khaki. You can use a Vallejo khaki or anything. Uh, but it's a little intermediary step since this is a pretty quick step. Again, it's a base coat. Don't want to like murder it. Couple coats since it's a lighter color. So that's our first coat on it. We're going to wash this at the same time that we do our. Uh, a purity seal wash. I'm just gonna have one down here. You see how that orange kind of sticks out? It's nice. Yeah, a couple coats of this. We go back, hit your orange. Another coat of this if you need to, and then let it dry and wash. So while we're waiting on our purity seals to dry, um, we can go ahead and get started on the next step. We'll take the Signar Blue Highlight here. It's kind of the, the accent color for the whole army. Add that to our palette. So using all sorts of different color ranges. And so this is where we're going to start doing things like the eyes, the little lights and things that are on the... Uh, the armor here and just generally anything you can see that you, you want for the weapons here so this guy is going to be all blue so we'll go ahead and get these little power cells and again eyes lenses things like that touch those up these little accents here all those little guys will start with that first layer for those all right, good old Agrax. Now that our uh, purity seals are dry, grab our liner. Put some on there. And then kind of a dollop in the middle just to define the, the details. And then hit the purity seals. We're gonna re-highlight and we're actually gonna do some a little bit of text on these. It's too heavy, so remember if you get anything too heavy, you can just adjust by drying off your drying off your brush and then using it to stipple everything out. Siphon stipple, one of those words. Let's see, that guy had one. This guy's got two. I missed that first one. on the first pass. But apply this to all of your purity seals. And then we'll go back and we'll do a little bit more work on them just to refine them. So with our blue that we applied, we're gonna wash over that with our, um, our game wash here. So I've already added a little bit to the palette. Um, for this plasma coil, I'm going to add it to the top. I'm just in the top. Because I want the sides to be nice and bright. So it's okay if it runs down, but I'm making sure just to get it in this top area here. And then here, just make sure that it's in, in between all those little bulbs I'm going pretty heavy with it the game washes are pretty pretty light so this is a, a fairly dark blue wash adding a few layers here going all the way to the edge and then for the eyeballs and the lenses and things like that we'll go in get real close up and make sure it forms like a little ring of wash there around the around the, that lens there we go running in and we want to do that for the eyes these we want the base of them to be a little bit darker these sort of little 
lights. So for these guys, we added the blue in the, the slit, the little eyelet slit. And we're going to highlight the front of it, almost making like a cyclops sort of eye. So we'll add our wash in the corners here. And this guy's going to have a different color gun so we can differentiate it. And we'll go for kind of like a hot, hot look. This other guy's got the blue. So we want to be able to tell them apart when they're sitting next to each other on the battlefield because their guns are kind of similar. Not super similar, but enough to where if they're the same color, you might get confused. So, skipping back to the purity seals, we're going to add a little bit of white to our palette. And we'll take our base color first, and we'll look at our purity seal here. And then we want to highlight back up. Let's make sure we're not getting too dark of a transition here on these guys. Line the bottom a little bit. And highlight up. So we'll progress by adding one shade of white here. Just mix up. And then that'll give us a, a brighter sort of top edge highlight. Just to define that shape and make it stick out a little bit more. All right, for text on purity seals, I like to add just a little bit of reddish brown. It doesn't really matter what it is. That was uh, light rust from air. The air makes it even more flowy off the bristle. But see this color here, we're going not for like a stark black because that really, like, it doesn't look right as far as uh, text on your purity seals. And for the actual text portion, Make sure my brush isn't super heavy loaded. Let's see if I can get focused here. And just kind of wiggle your brush and move it. Try to just hit the tip. There, get your text on the purity. So, probably need one more line to make it even out. Cool. Let me just add that to all the seals. All right, another kind of long step. Going to get a game color earth. It's going to be the basis for any of the fabrics or wood that we have. We're going to use the same color for both. Um, so the stocks on the rifles get this color. All right, this is a, a base coat. We're going to go back and do a wash. And then any areas like up here, you can do the bottom parts brown, and then the top parts can remain uh, metal for like the receivers and stuff. And then the um, the rifles here. So all this was metal. Probably should have never even painted it metal, but it's fine. It's going to be this uh, this brown now. And then some of these guys, they'll have little pouches here and there. Let's see if I can find one. So like this guy's got a pouch tucked up in there. Um, don't have to paint those if you don't want to but we go ahead and do because it's part of the detail level and then on the backpacks you'll have straps so you see these little buckles and then straps these as well that go over we're gonna go ahead and hit all that stuff and then there's one backpack here that's one of the special weapons it's got a lot of straps and he's got some extra bags so like here and then these are strapped down so we're gonna leave these metal that we're going to paint these the whole bottom area and then just about all the backpacks have like a little pouch here on the side we'll give those a minute to dry we can go back and check these areas that we washed since they're dry they get lightened up a little bit we get a highlight layer uh, in the eye here we can mix go a step up get our brighter blue here and then in between in the visor here and that little bright highlight so it looks like he's he's got a little blue light coming in the middle of his visor now if you get any on the edges or you have trouble getting in there then like you can do an edge highlight so I can hit
hit this like bottom row just to make it look like it's glowing a little bit. So that way you got a little bit of a little bit of glow. Let me get that there. And yeah, that way it looks like it's kind of bright, but you still have the dark in the corners there. Um, so we're going to do that with all of the uh, the little blue areas. Highlight them up. If they're bulbs like this, these little guys, we'll do. Get your highlight, and then we'll do a little white dot at the end. It'll look like a little power coil hanging off the bottom. So the same thing we did for the visor here. We're going to do for these little guns, and then the blue guns, um, or the the rifles, they're going to have blue down in these little spots, and we're going to do the same thing uh, with that. For the eyes on these guys that have the inset eyes, I just added a little bit of this blue, this light blue highlight at the bottom and then a white dot in the, the top corner here on each side. So that gives you your lens look without really having to paint uh, a lens in there. Um, and then these little things get the little white dots as well. For your quick and dirty plasma coil look, You'll take your original color, pull it through in the middle, like not on the ridges, put your brush, let it lay down. It's okay if it goes over a little bit, it's not gonna affect it that much. Um, again, this is just kind of quick and dirty, mid-level tabletop. Um, so pull that down, then mix a progression of your light blue. Pull it all the way down to the bottom, mix up another progression all the way down the bottom, and then start dragging it across the coil so it's going over the humps as well and then your white just at the very bottom just right down inside and across the top of the coil gives you that sort of coil look where it's getting getting hot ready to shoot so on your backpacks you're going to need some of the blue areas as well same steps that we did with the other guys hit like this this thing that thing and then on the front there's another like little light so just a couple areas just to make sure you got some some more of that blue on the model so snake bite leather one of those magical colors that makes the world a better place I'm gonna add some of this and then any of our our brown areas like our straps and our guns and things like that uh, we're gonna go ahead and add this color just using it like a contrast in a fairly nice thick coat and just move it around let it pull up where it wants to get it in those cracks don't go over your metal with it because it'll it'll brown it down pretty well you don't want that I'm gonna keep that reddish tone so that'll be our color and then we can go back and add like a quick highlight with our our base brown um, for for like the rifles for the the packs and things like that um, those ones that are on the uh, the backpacks we won't need to highlight these up any 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 longer or anymore we'll just put our contrast over there and those will be done that gives a nice warm brown color uh, that works with our goal as well and we've got to put it on the straps too and so just for the rifles I went back with my earth brown and hit along these edges here because GW likes the edge highlight we're gonna emulate that a little bit it coats fairly lightly and that's okay but it pulls that edge out a little bit more gives you that wood look from here we're going to start doing edge highlights. So the Kador red highlight and the Kador red base are really good colors for doing edge highlight. They got a nice body to them, which makes it's important for edge highlighting to have a paint that has a fair amount of body to it because if you're working with something too thin, which a lot of reds and oranges can be, You'll be there forever. Ugh. Now, I'm gonna grab 
little bit of this red. Start brightening it up just a tad. All right. And edge highlights are going to go on our hard edges on our cloak. You see there? Brightens it up, cleans up our lines a great deal. And if you notice, I'm using the side of the brush. The only time I want to use the point is when I have a rounded edge. It gets too round and I want to drag it down. But from here, I can still use the side of the brush and sort of accentuate that curve that's in the cloak. So you can see here how, how much difference having that edge highlight there makes. If I bring it down here on this cloak, even all the way up into where it gets dark and shaded, it makes that line just that much cleaner. It pops. Um, so for these later, these little gaps that you're seeing here, we're actually going to put a stripe in on the edge of the cloak to, to make that disappear. So for base level of this other gun that we're going to turn into heat based I'm going to get out another white. It's a little bit heavier body. It's one of the Chimera whites. That way it will take less to do the base coats. And any of these uh, ribs, coils, we're going to base coat in white. Make sure that we get the underside as well. And this might take two coats with this white, but it coats fairly fast. And making sure that it's not globbing on there. See how I have a really light brush load. And I'm just working the paint. You know, those cracks and making sure that it's going on smooth because I don't want to build up a texture with the with the white paint for sure. I'm gonna do a couple of coats of this and then we'll move on. So after we get that white on and then I went ahead with the corresponding backpack of a white in between the ribs here, we're gonna add yellow ink. So add a little bit of that to the palette. I gotta use my good brush with this because we're only doing a little bit at a time. Um, and then we're going to get it in there, let's see, again it's okay if it rides up on the edges just a little bit, I'm not too worried about that. And that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and do all that to make it look like the heat is bleeding over. that backpacker really stick out and designate him in the squad for for what he is and we'll come over to the gun gonna hit the same thing you can already see the ink moving into the, the cracks I'm using inks because we can Layer them up. They're almost like a wash, but they're gonna they're gonna coat a little bit more evenly with these uh, ribs in the weapon here. I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. All right. So when that's dry, we'll grab our red ink here, and then our backpack here. And then we're going to do the lower sides down in here. Get to focus. Get that nice hot look going. Might still have a little bit of wet yellow in there. Not super worried about it. And 
We got kind of that heat look going on, like there's a little furnace in his backpack. Now we can mix a little bit of this. See, it's already pretty, pretty heavy because of what was in my brush. And then come back in here and blend it just a little bit. Just to get a little bit more of that orange tone. In our vents. There we go. We got our little hot backpack. Now I'm grabbing my liner for this one. I'm gonna get a little more aggressive with this larger area. And come in from the bottom. And just let it do its thing, really. See how some of them are shooting up the, the cracks there? I want to encourage that. Just keep adding more pigment from the bottom. And pulling down as we do that bottom edge. Come over here. Reload this side. See, I'm gonna layer it up. I'm getting the whole area there, and I can take my finger and sort of wipe. And then we're leaving those yellow high points. And over here, I'm just gonna do the whole thing and then wipe. See how we got that sort of heat ray going? I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Get that layer in so we have, since we have that dry at the bottom. And pull. Now we got our little built up energy weapon. Next step is to add those sort of uh, iconic markings. So I like to do the stripes at the bottom of the coat. I like to start with a tan. And so this is the same tan that we used as a base coat for our uh, purity seals. And I pick a distance, sort of pull and pull toward yourself and get your baseline in. And then switch it over, reload, freshen up the point on your brush. We're going to have a wide line here and pull, kind of follow the, the distance from that other line as we go across this hump, it goes up and pull. And we're going to finish that out all the way across, fill it in, make it opaque, do that on all the guys. This guy had kind of a bad seam, so we're actually going to run a stripe up and then across for him. So once I get that nice solid stripe across the bottom, I'll take my tan, I'll do a step up. Don't want it too drastic. And I'll find the high areas. And I'll do highlight. So that we're kind of following our lighting scheme that we've developed with the airbrush. And that way we give this stripe more dimension. Instead of just being a boring stripe. And then I'm going to add another step to that. So I'll go up. I want to go quite all the way to white. Go 
here. And maybe just pull it down the edges here. Another chance to refine those lines just a little bit. Definitely give you an edge highlight. Pull it. Edge highlight. Edge where it transfers over. Right. Adding those highlights brings a whole other dimension to just having that stripe on that on that cloak. Brightens it up. So now it's time to dry brush the bases. Getting close to the end. So we got a blue gray pale. Poke it. Whoop, that's a little much. So whenever that happens, squeeze your paint a lot and you can use the bottle to suck it back up. Tap it down, squeeze the bottle. Vacuum it up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna save plenty. So I'm gonna get again dry brush. These are really useful. Brush wet, and then carefully come in, start lightening up our gravel. Would help if I did that on screen, wouldn't it? It's okay to get it on the ring of the base because we're going to go back and try to avoid the cloak. See how I'm rolling the brush under it? Got a little bit right there, but that's fine. And then we'll go back after we put our gray on and we'll add some white. Alright, so after you got your, your gray on, wipe out your brush as much as possible. Get some of the white. Rub it off. Up one more time and then just on the front of the base so it's going to be a little bit brighter and it's going to draw more attention to the front right, a little bit there reload right there on those front rocks right the front. see how you have the difference of the the brighter toward the front Still got some white on there. And just a little bit more over here. Cool, we got our wasteland on. So next we're just gonna take our black and clean this guy out a little bit. But I like the um, the Chimera black again for ringing bases. Go in. I usually take a little bit larger brush for this step. So a synthetic or something. I still got a decent tip on it. Grab our black. And then clean up our base. Because we want that nice clean base. Get rid of all that little red and that overage of dry brush that we got on there just a minute ago. This makes for a nice finished model. And see I'm coming from the, the bottom with the bristle so I don't have much chance of actually hitting my my base. I'm just hitting the ring. I 
maybe hit the underside of some of the rocks, but that's okay. So now we got a nice clean model. All we need to do is map varnish it. Oh, there's that stripe I put up the side. Kind of hides that seam that we had. Just rides along that seam. So if you have any bad ones, you can just add that as like an accent for some of your guys.